okay, people don't appreciate time. They don't. They don't know how much, uh, how much time is worth. So mm-hmm. you should. That's why you should never sell your time exactly. for a rate. Like never ever do that. Welcome everyone to the Talk Club. This is episode four of the Talk Club. How is everyone doing? Hope you all doing well. Hope you're being safe. And this in episode four, we're gonna talk about uh, uh, media production, mostly music production. Um, if you haven't watched the episodes before, go back and watch them. Subscribe to our channel. Some show some uh, support to our uh, social media platforms such as TikTok and Instagram. Um, Today I have with me Muhammad Al Jandali. How you doing, Mo? I'm good. Good. How are you, Ahmed? Oh, good. Doing well. And we're gonna talk about media production, specifically music production. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. So you have your pro- that's your profession, basically. So you have experience with this stuff. Yeah. So um, I basically started like seven years ago mm-hmm. as a poet. So I was invited to one of the uh, uh, poetry nights yep. uh, by my by my school I was just uh, grade nine um, it was I, I like I had a mathematic uh, class and then uh, somebody just walked in and, and said uh, who's interested in poetry and I and I basically did not know nothing about poetry oh. um, but I had this interest of skipping the class <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, th- this have... is this is like this is how everything started so I was like um, I raised my hand and then, like every everybody, like uh, started looking at me and no, and like sorry, every everybody started looking at me in like in a in a weird way, um, asking this question of like uh, like how did you come into into poetry? Like you, you like you know nothing. You just want to skip the class, but um, I took the chance and I went out and I and I actually began like the workshops over like three months, uh, learning poetry, how to write, how to how to, how to do the rhythm and everything. And then I uh, I went to the competition uh, with the, like uh, another 160 uh, poets, uh, mm-hmm. all in my age, and I actually like won like the second uh, the be- uh, the second best uh, uh, poet in Qatar back in 2015. So after that, uh, I I began to expand my my network in the industry. So I started working with uh, uh, singers, um, mm-hmm. writing them uh, lyrics for and and like lyrics for for their songs. So yeah, like this is how. I like I, I began my my career and music as well yeah mm-hmm. um you're studying media now in Carlton University correct yeah exactly so um like I didn't know I'm gonna go for media because I actually had this yeah. uh, engineering uh, interest yeah but uh, like after after I came here um, I, f- um, I I began to find myself more and more in music mm-hmm. uh, so yeah I actually in music and like me uh, television presentation. Right. So uh, yeah, I like and now right now I'm like a f- uh, third year, third fourth year, uh, oh. media studies uh, in Carleton University. That's amazing. How do you link them both, like uh, <sighs> media That's... and music? So they do link, of course. Mm-hmm. But like for yourself, how do you link them? So basically, like in, in my opinion, uh, in 2020, mm-hmm. you can link everything to media. Of course. Even if you like, if you're an engineer, you're a doctor, you're um, um, I don't know, like you studied in anything, like you're an artist, everything can be linked to media because mm-hmm. everything needs media right now. And especially like after this year, like after 2020, we, we like we all know how media is important. Correct. So, um, uh, but it's, but it's as well, it's, it, it depends on the person, right? Because th- there's a lot of people who study and, and they want to go online. They want to show what their knowledge and everything, but they really can't find this, uh, this connector. So, uh, th- like the way I I decided to connect the media that I'm studying with my music interest mm-hmm. is through the business that I that I that I started, and it's it's called Imagine Media Production. Uh, last year, I and I'm still trying though. Like it's it's not it's not can, it's not well connected. Like I still find myself studying things, uh, doing uh, some courses where they like they do not relate to what I'm actually doing. But I hope that I'll I'll find like I hope I'll, I'll make this uh, connector more solid with the time um yeah so i as i said like uh 
what we study in media is basically like the media theory. So how right. to reach people, how to reach your audience, mm-hmm. how to show them what they want, what what like what they want to see exactly what they want to see, um, how to how to make them satisfy of your content. Right. And in media production, that's like our number one concern. You know. Of course. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. yeah. That's that's great. Um, I wanted to ask you, how does someone get into the industry? You know, like it's um, like I know I know how to get into um, into the visual part of the industry. Mm-hmm. Um, like if you wanna if you wanna be an editor, if you wanna be a director, if you wanna be a videographer, um, I think a lot of people can research that. But I think that people don't know have this have this blank area when it comes to music industry exactly exactly so would you please tell us how to get into the industry like how to start first so so there there are actually multiple ways mm-hmm. um it's, it's as you said nobody knows about it like no. it's just it's too big music industry is, is actually too big to a point where you actually don't know like um the cash flow that's happening in this industry like it's it's just a lot of money going there and if you want to get there, everything, every everybody thinks you have to be, you have to have your own production team and stuff like that. And well, like the multiple uh, panels, the multiple channels that you actually can go into music industry through, depending on your, it, it, it all depends on who you are as somebody wants to get into this industry. Right. Are you a producer? You have you have a different channel. Are you a lyricist? You have a different way. Are you a music composer? Are you a music arranger? It all it actually all depends on 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 who you are as mm-hmm. somebody who wants to get into this music industry. You might be some um, business manager who who just who just wants to make money, and that's right. as well a different uh, channel. And and I I learned that like in a, in a hard way throughout right. the years um, because as, as I said it's, it's been like four it's been five to seven years actually. Um, but yeah, so you can actually as a lyricist, first thing you want to do is try to reach for singers. Sure. Because like um uh um like uh, the singer is the actual artist and 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 as a lyricist if if you have your own lyrics and you want to produce them you you're not you're not gonna be going to a to a, a production a manager because mm-hmm. he's not gonna appreciate your art. That's not that's not the person that you need, of course. Exactly, that's not the person that you need. Why, like, on, in, in in fact, most lyricists try to try to reach these companies, and they they just found them they they just find themselves doing nothing and reaching nothing because they. If if you want somebody to appreciate your art, you should show your art to an actual artist. Exactly. So that's that's like that's the the mistake that lyricists and composers do. Uh, the reason um the reason I'm combining them is because they both have uh they they both the, uh, they're both trying to show something mm-hmm. uh, that's not obvious yet because lyrics to read them as lyrics they're not as uh, as beautiful as when 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 they're actually being sing. Like when when the singer is actually singing these lyrics. Same for com- for composition. If you want to create the melody in your voice, it's not gonna be as good as if if this melody is actually played in the song itself. Exactly. So here's here's the thing that that's that's why I said it depends on who you are as somebody who wants to get into the the industry. It's the hardest job for the lyricist and composer to get into the industry. It's not as hard for the singer because. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, there are a lot of companies who are looking for singers. Like even even us, in the past two years, like we paid our most of the budget on action on singers. Interesting. Because like uh, the singer, the only thing they do is um, they should have um, um, social media pl- uh, accounts and just show their voice. They're not creating anything. Like they're not creating anything new. They have the talent. Correct. And when once you have the talent and you don't want to speak about it, the only thing that people will do is will try to fish for you, to fish for singers. Mm-hmm. Uh, same for music arrangers. Music arrangement is is needs and needs a university degree or needs a lot of experience. But that's it. When, when you're a music arranger, people will find people will search for you because you're Correct. needed there. Yeah. And uh, so so one one last point as to, to the answer of your question of how to get into into the industry. People should understand that the more you work uh, on your profession, uh, the easier people will get to you. Of course, the more people will reach you. And here's the thing with the lyrics, uh, lyricists and composers: it's it's the talent that they were born with. Uh, 
it's you, you don't put a lot of effort on the lyrics as you put effort on actually al- arranging the music of the of the song mm-hmm. uh that's why uh it's it's as a lyricist and a composer it's it's always hard to convince the um music production companies that you actually have something exactly. so the the, conne- the connection is here if you're a lyricist or a composer try to find singers because these singers will get you will get your art uh produced because i think it's the word so it's it's the singer's word after all like it's who he's comfortable to work with that's what the company is going to go with uh yeah but like not in not in most cases it depends mm-hmm. on the on the size of the singer uh oh. if you're a new singer you're actually you're being fully controlled by the by by the oh, yeah of course that's that's the way it works so um he, he, here's why a lot of people do not understand music industry it's because the leverage you have is your audience so okay. if you're for example rotana production right uh you have leverage over every single arabic singer mm-hmm. it's just because it's just because you have because you have, a, you have the, a the big biggest audience, audience. Space, yeah like uh if 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 you're uh like if if you're a popular singer right uh let's give voel kfouri as an example uh and you want to and uh, just just by the way i'm i'm i'm, I'm giving yeah. arabic examples uh because um the my my like my space is arabic and in terms of music production right so yeah if 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 you have like over 7 or 8 million followers you absolutely have leverage over these companies that only have 100 100k on, oh, yeah, on their youtube channel and this way you have the final word as you said mm-hmm. i have the final word why because if i don't know if if i i like these uh i like this composition and these lyrics and as a singer I actually want uh, want them to be produced. If you refuse what I want as a singer, mm-hmm. in 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 one second I can find a hundred other companies that wants to work with, that want to work with me. Yeah, of course. If you're at this level, yeah, exactly. And same happens for the music production company. If 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 you're if you as a singer do like do want, like if you're not collaborating with us, mm-hmm. we can find hundred other other singers. Of course, yeah, of course. Uh, do you think? Um, the main reason why uh, it's difficult for composers and um, for poets as well uh, to find the right uh, company to work with or to find the right uh, job in a company is because of the lack of the musician's ear. Like basically where they don't know or they can't imagine what the work or what the final product Mm -hmm. is going to be. So well, it's well. Sorry, I'm just cutting you off there. Well, it's like if we compare it to a singer, um, he already can imagine it easy easier than like uh, like a, a project manager. Yeah, right. Like you, you mean by musical ear by the productions, the production the, t- uh, teams, or like by the by the managers that you oh, yeah, 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 that yeah, you that, produ- that you submit work exactly, to. Exactly. Yeah, that's absolutely one of the problems. One of the problem is because I bef- before. Before I had, uh, like, before I started my business, mm-hmm. which is IMP, uh, as I said, I worked like for three to four years as a lyricist, and it was absolutely hard to convince music pro- music producers of my art. And it was just like me swimming in an ocean that does not have a beach, you know. Like I'm just I'm just Basically. swimming in the same area over and over and over, and and just not finding the the right place to to settle. Yeah, it's because nobody, not nobody. That's a big word. Like most of the producers do not actually have the musical ear, as you said, and they cannot no. imagine the final piece. Uh, it's it's just it's the same, the same thing that happened with uh, Steve Jobs when, right. when 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 he tried to when he was the only one who had the picture for the final product, and actually nobody was and he believing. Tried, them, yeah, he believing tried to him. get some investors as well. Exactly, like, and it's it's the same thing when 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 you're an artist, you have a long a long path to, yeah. to go through. Uh, once you have your audience, people will, will reach you, and that's what happens. And we have only, like, for example, we have some examples of lyricists who actually have leverage over music production. So there are some lyricists in our uh, Mina uh, area mm-hmm. uh, who actually w- uh, reached uh, reach a stage where uh, they have a, lo- a big leverage over over even singers. Uh, Ayman Bahjat Amar in Egypt is an example. Uh, Munir Abu Asaf in Lebanon is another example. Right. These are these are all ry- lyricists who actually who who can who can change the lyrics after the production, and nobody's gonna tell them nothing. 
because their name is the brand yeah they use their name as as the brand of this of the song because of the audience space that they have yeah because because of the history that's the, history, that's another yeah. thing yeah that's another thing oh yeah um, yeah so so yeah as you said it's it, this is one of one of the issues that lyricists and composers actually face where do you think this is going for young people who are starting to get into this industry the problem with this industry though is is it's it's not straight jobs like you, no. you just don't you, you don't graduate from from university and try to apply for it for a position in, in whatever company and then you you start working no uh it's totally different than that it's um it's it requires you to have your own network mm -hmm. uh so where do i think this this uh industry like how how how, how do these um young so like, artists connect to the industry that's is that what's, um, what, the, what i'm saying is like how is this industry treating those young as artists or people who are starting to get into the industry mm -hmm. so yeah. so it's basically this the music industry in our area so i'm, mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not like i'm not uh Talking. generalizing yeah uh in the middle east the music industry is like a cake okay. and everybody wants to get a part of it yeah and everybody believes that if if somebody takes a part of the cake they're gonna lose theirs yeah and here's the problem and we have a lot of popular singers and for you as a young talented boy if you want to get get into the industry you'll be fought against people oh, will yeah. try to kick you out oh no yeah. matter what you do like me as as a music producer imagine that i'm the one who's paying f to produce these songs uh i found people who who wanted to let me down in egypt for example i started working in egypt and i found these people in the industry who were like Who's this twenty-year-old um, young boy who's producing for? Who's producing songs and and one of them actually went. went it's, it's called Alania. One of them actually mm -hmm. like uh, reached one hundred and seventy k views like within the first two or three weeks. Interesting. We got a lot of uh, criticism over it. Me as a person, like, um, and it's it's just uh, like it's criticism that does not make any sense. You know, it's I just see. people hating you to to beat them. You know? that's that's even not criticism it's just absolute hate exactly but but the thing is it's you, you, like it's it's normal you're gonna find hate all over the place you will definitely yeah definitely in any industry i feel like um with your art as well like with your uh, with your pieces that you create you try to create a vision as well so like it's it's something that you imagined you put put a passion in and then you're just creating it yeah. showing a part of you as well exactly yeah. uh, i i so one of the challenges that i found in and and in terms of uh, picturing the final uh, song is actually I, when I was a lyric, just a lyricist before me uh, be, uh, getting into the composition world, mm -hmm. um, my talent was basically the words. Yeah. Uh, show the words to somebody and they're going to imagine it, whether you, you're going to like it or not. Exactly. And imagine if you're a producer who only has this part of the talent. So you're a producer, but the only thing you've got is is the lyrics, uh, lyrics you don't have stuff. a singer you don't have anyone to work exactly with you. that's it so when i when i when i got these guys and i i showed them the lyrics they and i trusted the music arranger i trusted the composer as no as as they're like they're gonna show me what i'm actually looking for uh they produced a song and i paid a lot a lot of money on it and then at the end the final piece was completely different than what i expected interesting uh, and this was like the first step of me deciding, you know what, I have to, I, I, sh I must begin uh, the music. I, I must begin getting into the music composition, uh, to, to the music composition and later on the music arrangement last year to be able to, to, to just draw the, the, like draw the demo for the final song before me paying on, on, on producing songs and then getting different expectations. Interesting. Do you think that like uh, personal knowledge about the person that you have that you're working with, like if you really know them, does that really affect it in a positive way, like the final product or? It affects the f it it affects in a in a in a big way, mm -hmm. um, uh, especially given the fact that most of the people I work with is are not in Canada. No. Uh, so I'm mo like in a lot of cases, I had to to to, to work with people who I had no idea about. Oh, so, like I just. Oh, that's that's an interesting part. Exactly, like, I, I just really... I just knew them. For example, this song, Alania. Yeah, it's a song 
like it's our it's our hit like our business like most uh, uh viewed song love it yeah i, I did it. not see the singer for a single time i did oh. not see the lyricist for a single time i was just a composer i did not see the music arranger oh god and i produced it i produced the entire song and i did i did not even see the people who worked on the mu- on the video production yeah so and the video production uh the people who worked on the video production did not have the chance to see the singer no. neither the lyricist neither the composer everybody was in a in a different part what, but like when you when you listen to the song it's actually beautiful like you can you can never imagine that this happened and this was before covid so it's it's not something that we that oh, we I did see. this year i see um but i know i know a lot of examples uh, like of of this kind of work being done one of them being uh, fiverr fiverr is mm-hmm. I'm not sure if you know about it of course you do um so you basically hire hire a creator someone with a talent or someone with uh, someone who has a skill to uh do something for you like such as um motion design or graphic design um singing as well i, I know a bit about singing uh some um some audio recording as well so like you pay them for for their time or for their skill and then they i've seen professional video is being created out of fiverr yeah but like uh give me give me a percentage so, like this does not happen often because no no it does not it does yeah, not but um my uh where what i'm trying to go with it uh sorry what I'm, tr- what I'm trying to reach is um tell me about like what's the actual trick there like mm-hmm. how do you keep communicating in the right way try to show the right vision and try uh, try to achieve the the project that you that sorry the product that you have in mind mm-hmm. in uh when you have when you have multiple people working overseas that you can't meet with face to face exactly so um what you said over fiverr is is, is true at a certain point um in a lot of cases that, that does not happen because uh, the final song or the final video is 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 absolutely um you can you uh, you can relate it to a painting it's it's very simple similar mm-hmm. to a painting you can't get a color you can you can't have like multiple painters and each one is just uh using their own color and then you and then because at the end of the day when you see when you look at the final painting right it's not going to be the same as if, if it's all done by one person no so th- that's that's a problem where it comes where uh you want to produce something and you go online and and you make the video by somebody and then right you make the song by somebody and then the melody by somebody and they do not have chemistry that's like that's the the biggest hardship that uh us as as music production companies outside there the Arabic region fight face and there are a lot of other people like like I'm I'm not the only one who who, act, who who's producing songs overseas yeah uh, this this is why this is why I said last year or last two years I started to to study composition to study Arabic skills music skills to study music arrangement because when I I'll be the judge not only for the lyricist who I'm working with as a producer. Right. So I, I'm a producer and I'm working with a lyricist. Now I'm I'm not the lyricist. I have this uh, judgmental uh, uh, vision over the lyrics, but I need to have that for the composition and I need to have that for the music arrangement and I need to have that for the financial budget. Correct. Uh, this this is why as as a, as a as a as a business leader, I must I must have background, a basic knowledge of all these four aspects. And this is the only thing that helped me after what, like, like af- afterwards that this is the only thing that helped me manage producing things overseas because mm-hmm. I am the, like, I'm being the reference. You need, you need one reference and multiple workers. Right. Because this one reference will judge their work and this one reference will finalize the final picture with the team. So no matter, no matter where they're located, as long mm-hmm. as you have one reference, one mindset, one judgmental vision that you trust, this guy is gonna make it happen right um tell me so now I'm, I'm really interested in the part that um now you're just managing a team in this case so like um to the part that like yeah now we can relate to it a bit like us in COVID-19 and the way it changed how everyone's working right now some people are trying to work from home still working from home as well some people are just like you know um not meeting like they're just uh, choosing Zoom to meet, or uh, they're just choosing other ways to create their the same work that they uh, they used to create, especially when it comes to production 
or the media production side of work um i see i see it has affected us mainly because like a lot of people had to lose some clients i know um a lot of people had to back off a little bit some people had to lose money like uh some some businesses as you told me before like had to had to lose money and uh they fell in, into the trap of like yo we just lost all of our clients some people with partners as well like they they just stopped working together because of whatever coronavirus a pandemic thing that's absolutely them. right so, yeah, yeah, yeah so like tell me how how do basically first first of all just want to back back it up a little bit so so how to sorry how did did that hit your business mm-hmm. first mm-hmm. and how did you overcome that like so um we had a we had a so we, we were hit we were hit by two ways first of all um we we had a, a, a youtube channel it was for kids production mm-hmm. so we, what we do is we basically produce songs for kids right um and and, and it's an animation channel so we like we expanded our team too quickly that was one of the mistakes yeah. uh, we had uh, these anima- anima- animators and graphic designers and all that and we started to produce songs for kids right. once a week that means a thousand dollars bi-weekly that means a lot of money being spent on this channel and we we were actually expecting in, in the sixth month so like the way youtube al- algorithm works is after six months for kids channels after six months most probably you'll be able to reach the 4,000 um, hours and a thousand subscribers and you'll get the partnership with YouTube and you'll start making a lot of money and YouTube and kids ch- kids channels oh, especially kids channels right? exactly kids channels make multiple million dollars uh, over like there are a lot of cha- there are some channels mm-hmm. uh, such as Coco Melon as an example they these guys they make a lot of money a lot of money like millions of dollars every year yeah uh, but like in January, 2020 um google decided they're gonna stop monetization for kids kids channel kids Ouch. channels and that's that was because uh, a lot of parents in, in in the u.s i'm not pretty sure of of that of the specific state uh, they they were claiming about uh inappropriate ads being presented to kids while they're actually watching the content and it was a case that was open like more than two years ago, but it, it was closed uh, like in our fifth month. Uh, so. This case was closed. The decision was up. The U.S. government banned monetization for kids. So. Oh. Yeah. And this way we lost a lot of money and we lost a lot of money. The problem is this. The money we lost is not our money. It's it's investors money. Oh, so that was that was like our first boom like our first uh uh kick right uh these investors want their money back yeah of course because the project was not it, the project did not start making money and once it started if if it if it began making money and then we lost then the investors will lose their money as well because that's that's the way our contract was was set so oh. the contract is valid is valid once we receive our first one dollar okay yeah yeah you got me now so like uh the thing is everything happened before receiving this one dollar like before two or three weeks of receiving this this one dollar so we lost and now we have to repay these investors so there was no contract in the beginning because there there were contracts but but these contracts states state that these contracts will only be valid will only be valid once we receive our first dollar Oh yeah, what I, what I was saying, like mm-hmm. it was not valid, so it's exactly. like it's like there was no contract. So mm-hmm. yeah, so so they want their money back. Well, uh, some of the investors actually forgave us for the money. They Amazing. said, you know, we feel you. Uh, you guys lost a lot of. M- the thing is, it's not only about money. It's it's, it's like five six months full time work. Yeah. So you lost all of this time just for nothing. Uh for Most the for the experience. That's like that's one thing. That's that's one thing. That's that we, one thing. That's exactly. Good, yeah. Uh, that that was number one. Number two is COVID as well. Yeah, uh, we 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 stopped working. We stopped trying to reach for customers. Uh, we had some ideas and some customers who wanted to do some things, and they 
like some ads and stuff like that. But you know how in COVID, a lot of businesses they they they're, they're not expanding. They're thinking no, they're of how rethought, to keep yeah. of of how of how to not lose. Of how to yeah, they rethought they rethought a lot about mm-hmm. like uh, monetizing and uh how to pay like for an example like how how to spread their expenses so basically media was getting less and less and less in expenses um i know a lot of people lost their jobs because of it like exactly yeah yeah. even within companies like those companies have had to lay off some people Mm -hmm. as well exactly yes and that that's basically what we did so we had the team we like they were not like just freelancers no we used to pay for them like um, on a monthly basis um uh, a lot of them like were in turkey and that that's what happened to them like we're like we stopped everything so you had to lay off the, yeah we stopped we stopped everything and um uh, and not only we not only that we don't have money right now we actually want to work to be able to pay the money back to these investors interesting and for the not only the investors for the uh contractors who, who were producing for mm-hmm. the animators they still need money. We still need to close. You know that this was like our number one. So when when Google stopped adding, uh, stopped the uh, monetization for kids, we hoped that during the year we will be able to get back. And then COVID, but then COVID, COVID comes hit. to say hi. You know, yeah, hi. You're not gonna be able to do that. Just no. go back in your home. And just wait for me to leave. And that's like another year. That's not leaving soon. Uh, yeah. Hopefully it does. But yeah, yeah. So this is this 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 is how like uh, my my last year was. <laughs> I mean, you always have to be uh, optimistic about this stuff. So mm-hmm. there is there is a way through it. But how do you think we can overcome this? Like, what is what is the steps that we can take right now um, to either overcome it or to reduce the effect of COVID on those companies? Uh, so like I'm I'm. I think I'm not the, like the right person to answer this question, but I I, I have this uh, uh, idea that um, so in terms of startup startups because that's my experience. Like I I cannot give advice for like big companies. No, you know I I can just speak for myself. Uh, for startups, one of the biggest problems uh, is that they think uh, you can only overcome problems when you have more partners. Right. More problems, more partners, more loss and money. But they like they, they don't get the last part. Uh, this my advice would be for everyone who wants to start their own business: start by yourself. Okay. Start by yourself, building whatever you want to build, block by block. Right. On a slow base. Once you feel you already built your own base, then you can go for either partnership if you need uh, a capital, or you can hire somebody. Right. Even if you, even if two customers uh, took you took you an entire year, take the entire year because you're building something for your future. It's 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 how your it's how your daughters and sons will be eating. Right. Like this is this is their, their direct income. If 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 you're considering your business your direct income and you want to build right. an actual big business that you can profit from and you can base your entire financials uh, expenses on, then take the time to build it. It's, it does not have it does not happen quickly. And that was. That was this is like the most popular mistake mistakes in startups where they they say I I led this somebody with me for like a thousand k and now he's he's making ten thousand k a month um, for nothing just because I believe because. that I needed his money but it's 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 all it's, it all happens here it's the mindset exactly it's the mindset it's it's either you working for one month to be able to get this one k or you just get it from a friend and put him as a partner for fifty percent. Mm-hmm. It's, and he's just sitting around doing exactly nothing. they're just doing nothing so yeah. it all happens in your mind it's it's how you view and we did not know, we did not know that mm-hmm. until now so how uh so what what's the advice for for people and, and these times is just be optimistic and take the time to actually review everything that happened with you take the time to do some sort of a revision of of, of your past one or two years in business who were the people who who are the people that you want to complete uh, continue working with? Who are the people who are not reliable? Uh, what what were the, the the wrong expenses? Where did you spend your money mostly on? Um, where did you get your customers uh, from? Uh, who are the important connections that you were busy? You were a lot. Of, you were you were you were busy for getting reaching them. Yeah. Who are like who are these these connections? Try to reach them. I see. Uh, try to do the things that we used to, to take for granted. 
So and, and this is one of the one this is one of the points that I wanted to mention beforehand. Yeah. Uh, COVID and in, in in fact COVID uh let us all value things that we used to take for granted. Yeah. And not not only in a, in a business uh, uh like in a business atmosphere, even in our lifestyle as well. Lifestyles and individual, you know, uh, day-to-day activities. Yeah. Uh but the thing is w- so my advice would be for your experience as an individual uh, experiencing COVID-19, transfer this experience into your business. Okay. Don't rush. You know, th- just don't rush. Don't rush. Take the, take the time. To build. the To rebuild whatever it was, yep. uh, whatever whatever you, you lost, you know. Now, if I have a lot of time hanging around, you know, like since gee, there's nothing to do right now as well. Yeah. Like it's, there's. There's literally nothing to do. You can't spend so much money in in some cases. Some cases I've done everything that I can do to, you know, entertain myself. But like during this time, what would you give me as an advice um, to do in this in this free time that I have hanging around um, for myself trying to build a business? But I'm just lost because of COVID. And then I'm just like it's a big headache for me. I don't want to go through it, but I have to. So, I, like, what what would you what would be your advice to give me as like a person that I, that is trying to build a business right now in COVID? Mm-hmm. Right now in COVID, though, that's that's that's, that, a, bit, that's a hard question. It's, it's a bit specific, but I think um, I think that people have a lot of time, and that probably a lot of people have thought about it, like starting a business. Mm-hmm. So 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 the thing is you have two two types of people right now. Yeah. Uh these people who have money because of the uh government uh, support like because that because that, that government supported them. Yeah. Uh and these people have for them a lot of money. Uh and they believe they can do a lot of things with it. Correct. That's one issue. That's that's one one type of people. The other type is the ones who who were a lot busy and now they're free. Because for me time and money is the same. It's just a, a different type of capital. Time awesome. is a capital that you can start a business with, and money is the same. It's yeah. just the diff- different. One is physical, one is not. Exactly. Right? So, uh, so you have these, like you have, and 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 there are those lucky people who have both right now, money oh. and time. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, uh, and the problem here is, uh, for people who want to start business during COVID, mm-hmm. it's like in. Indeed, it's it's not good to start business in these days because you never know what's going to happen. You never no, know. It's... Like the prices for, for example, gold it keeps changing for prices for whatever stocks keeps change, changing. And these are all indicators that we're still not stable. No, we're not. not Com- during big stuff. companies are being impacted uh, in a, like every day in a different way. So how come during these times... Uh, you're trying to build something. I'm not saying that you just sit in your home. I'm saying take the time to think it. Take 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 the time to plan yeah. what you're gonna be doing after COVID. Uh, you can, and the, the like. The key here is slowly but surely. So uh, I'm not saying like like uh, don't start anything or don't build anything. I'm just saying plan it very well. Plan it very well. Yeah, because this capital of money and time that you have now, you will never be able to have it again. No. Um, no, you'll no. never be able to have it. You will never find yourself sitting in, in in the same spot for like three months doing nothing. Oh, never, never. And you will never find a, the government is not going to support you again. Like I mean, not, unless this not uh, same this thing happen. Not and, in this way. As much as they can, but like exactly. let's think about it. Like you know, like how how many people like mm-hmm. how many people are getting the support from the government mm-hmm. right now? Ooh, yeah, a lot. And it's like two thousand per person. Exactly. So like. And or like, fourteen hundred for students. Funny thing that but happened. Yeah, funny thing. That, funny the thing that happened. Like a few days ago, one of my friends said, uh, uh, "You know, like, uh, like I was, I was saying the same thing. You know, uh, just use it, use these money wisely, because uh, um, you never know. Like, it's not gonna happen again." He said, "No, like, if 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 something this looks like if if something like COVID happens again, uh, I'll be getting these supports uh, <laughs> again." I was like, "If something, uh, if something." Uh, like COVID happens again, there are more important stuff to worry about than your than, than your, the money that you're than the money you're gonna be getting. You know, because if if by if if by then you have a business, your entire business will be closed. Exactly. And 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 they are a lot of money. They're not a lot of money for for a person who used to make four to five k a month. They're yeah, not. Cool. They're nothing. They're like less than half of what what they used to make. 
I see. But they're a lot of money for students who did not used to work a lot. Hmm. And here's the thing. These people who have a lot of time and money right now are are the ones who have never built something before. No, or haven't been busy, actually. <laughs> have not been busy, have not built something before. They're, uh, most of their life uh, is spent on uh, social socialization with friends and stuff like that. So they have absolutely zero experience. But they have a lot of money and they have a lot of time. So they're, they're willing to spend it uh, to build something. But it's building something does not necessarily require you to spend your money. Exactly. So my advice in these days would be uh, put your money in a locker. Right. Take the time. To Take think. the time. Yeah. Use 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 your time as a capital, and you can use your money as a capital, but slowly but surely. Uh, just do not do like me. Like when I when I began, I began everything yeah. in, in one month, uh, <laughs> doing everything in one month. Oh yeah. And I just spent I, I can everything highly, I had. I can highly relate to this. Actually, I did I did um, start everything in one month as well. I do I did have a partner at, the, at that time, mm -hmm. and. Um, Kind of, I also relate to what you said about the par about partnership. Start by yourself. Don't start with a partner or like multiple partners because it's easier to um, to control. Basically, it's easier to yeah. plan and easier to manage. Um, saying that he did, he did help a lot with some projects and it, the workflow was kind of divided between us. But to some point, I felt like partnership could not work sometimes. Like you know, what? it is it is a good yeah. idea, but like it's also it's also difficult to like um, carry on the same vision that you wanna that you wanna have you got or it. get to the right point because exactly. sometimes, unfortunately, sometimes your partner would have a different vision or mm -hmm. he would think over the stuff that are not very important, and you're just sitting around having the same idea. Be like, dude, we wanna do this because we have to reach this that's that's the important thing but if we kind of like branch off at any point we're not gonna get to the right point basically 100 percent, 100 percent true yeah that, that like uh the, the this the, the vision thing is is a problem it is because yeah. uh, when you when, when you guys start uh like when so uh, as as you said uh my partners actually helped they did the the only problem was i had vision. a different vision yeah I had a completely different vision. I and the business uh, meant uh, different things than it meant mm -hmm. to them. Uh, that was like the main the, the main issue. When uh, when when you when you're building, you're actually not very con uh, concerned about the vision because you you guys are a lot busy. Exactly, getting no, things ready. You're not because you mm -hmm. st just started. You want to get everything done. So yeah, like, like bank accounts, first one to two years, like no 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 issues happen. Like we we're just no. building. But then after after they found out about your vision or you found you yeah found after a, about, after we got big yeah exactly we have our team and everything uh, like when you reach this this stage you have two issues first one is uh, as as your as as one of the partners you will definitely have different vision because back then when you guys started you, you did not uh, you did not um, see the you, you did not explain your vision no. well because you did not have it you know. That like because most probably you did not have this clear vision of of, of who you, of where you, where you wanna go exactly. Uh, so this is issue number one. Uh, and then and when the when the vision is different between partners, that means a lot of disputes. Oh, every single step that I want to take, I have to convince them why it's necessary. Mm -hmm. Why do I need to take it? Uh, be because and then the, the your because does not make any sense for them. That's what happens like in, in a year or two. Um, the other issue that happens is the management. Oh, that's one of the main things. Yeah. Exactly, the management. Because when you started, you had no team, right? No, You're right. Just, to, yeah. just you and your partner. Exactly. But after after you grew, you have you have mm -hmm. kind of a big team, but multiple managers as well, like who hold the same power. Exactly. It's kind of confusing, yeah. And then and, and then the all these conversations begin, begin where like, who's the manager, who's... Was the manager assistant? Uh, who has the final word? Well, I have the final word. When but when things, when things are actually hard, no one takes your final word, and everyone. No. The, because all these happened, things happen. I see it. I see it as like when uh, when it happens, like something important happens. It's confusing for the team to have multiple managers who hold the same power, or mm -hmm. or who would argue this like a lot. It's mm -hmm. confusing. First of all, it's not professional. Second of all, it's confusing for the team as well because 
Now, who do I listen to? Exactly. Because I want to keep yeah, my yeah. position. Mm -hmm. But who do I listen to? Do I listen to this guy or that guy? That's so, true. And I, I just want to explain something that um, touching upon what you said about having partners. Just want to explain the whole point. So what you're saying is not like not to work with people as partners, but like hire someone if you needed them. This this would be because it's yeah. easier to manage. They would they would not argue with you about your vision. They would just mm -hmm. follow your vision, basically. Exactly. So the, so this would be my personal advice. Yeah, it's it's not like the ultimate truth. It's my personal advice mm -hmm. is to build everything by yourself. The reason is though, it's not mostly because of the vision thing. The reason for this advice is because you get to do um, a lot of things when you're building. You have to have more, more knowledge about business, about credentials, about how to register your business in a in a right way, how to do taxation, right. how to to do some sort of account accountant. So when you want to manage after two or three years, you you have uh, basic knowledge of everything in your business. The Correct. problem what ha what happens in the business, and this is what happened with with me personally, is me doing something, my partner doing something. No one had no idea what the other person <laughs> is doing, yeah. and we just meet at the end of the, of the year. My goals do not meet with the financial people. reports. The financial reports and the, finan the financial budget do not meet my goals, my spending, mm -hmm. um, because no nobody knows what's the other person, what, what the other person is actually doing. Because be because the manager who was supposed to be me, the manager of the business did not have uh, basic knowledge of everything in the business. So just that's why I said start by yourself. Just build build. Just take one year, like one year by yourself, and then you can get a partner if you want. But at least sure. you know, at least at least you'll know, and you'll be obvious with them, with your partners, about their responsibilities in the business and your responsibilities in the business, and what they what they'll be doing. You'll have a basic knowledge and idea about what they'll be doing. You'll just you're not leaving everything. You're not just uh, because hundred percent. Uh, like if you, if you want to trust uh, somebody uh, in a hundred percent way, which is a blind way. Mm -hmm. you always find uh, different expectations oh yeah always always that's not because they're bad that's because uh, oh no they're not that's they're not well. they're not perfect that's not that's, because they're bad that's that's because they're not perfect you know? that as well that as well yeah so what you're saying is build build the base and then and then mm -hmm. try to see where this base is going to take you and then get and then, bigger and, and bigger can, and bigger and then you can get a partner way. but like for and then you can get a partner only if you need a partner if you don't yeah, need a partner, you just hire people. Exactly, exactly. Also, want to touch upon something that that you said. Um, you said, yeah, it's not always. It's not always that the other person is bad, and that's that's unfortunately like that's where I know a lot of business businesses who started. Some of them are my friends as well that I know of. Uh, they started as like friends, and then um, they built a business together, and then they fought throughout the way, and turned out. This person's bad. That person's bad, and then each one got went mm -hmm. into their ways, unfortunately. And that's that's what happens because like they don't look at the aspect of things as if um, this person is good, this person is good. They just have different visions. They just disagree on something, and that's fine. But you, you gotta still have the connection. That's and it. unfortunately, like a lot of connections get broken or get caught just because the business did not work together. Like the business ideas. Yeah. did not work and then they're like yeah this person is bad exactly exactly like uh, it, it goes to a personal uh, scale like uh, it's it's just my my issue with you is in business yeah but then you'll be understood as your issue with me and is personal yeah but it's not personal it's not it's never it's never personal yeah but it, but the thing is here here's the thing in in our age uh graduation age yeah uh, everything you do is this the thing with, with like without everything without you being personal. aware yeah without you being aware of it but everything you're, you'll be doing is personal because every block you put in your business will affect your income in 10 years that's exactly. why everything will turn out to be personal and if if i if i'm a partner with you mm -hmm. and you're responsible of one two three and i'm responsible of uh, four, five, six, and I, you do not do what you're asked to do, and what we both agreed oh, on. That's a big thing. Yeah. And if if you're not responsible of what you're doing, you'll be affecting my children' income in ten years. Exactly. Because what we're doing here is not a game. No, it's not an event that we're trying to organize. Um, and and after afterwards, we're gonna be forget, we're gonna forget about it. It's very tricky. It's very tricky because now you're building a business, 
um, you have a picture in front of other companies. Mm -hmm. If this picture gets destroyed even once, yeah, exactly. that can have an effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you never know. Even like now you look at some startups, you're like, nah, this is just, just a startup. Like, what what are they going to get me? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But like you look, they have, a, like a, they have a vision of like five, ten years. Five, ten years later, this startup is a big company now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like, and then you just killed a chance back then. Exactly. And that's that's when that's where you tell yourself never ever look at things in like now they're now they're just doing not well. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and, and this all goes back to the same point that I that I mentioned earlier, which is uh take the time and start by yourself. Exactly. Don't just have the idea, like just a, just a, just a, an abstract idea and bring the idea on the table and bring partners. This does not this is not good. This is not good. Just start by mm -hmm. yourself, expanding this idea, experimenting this idea uh planning like we have we have a lack of research as well this is one of the oh, problem yeah this is one of the problems we have a lack of research in whatever we want to do uh, oh, yeah. most most of students like uh, nowadays they they don't like to do some research about the business that they're getting into unfortunately yeah uh this lack of research is one of the one of the problems that will that impacts everybody uh on a, on a personal base and on a bigger basis you know uh and then you see a poor image being created. Exactly. Like after. Why not do? Why not doing a research of five months before trying to sell your iPhone? Why not doing a research of two months before trying to purchase something? Why not doing a research of how to, of how to make a YouTube video? Why not doing a research before doing whatever you want to you want to whatever exactly. you'll be doing? Exactly. Like just do some research, get an idea, see what other people are saying, mm -hmm. like. Do a research of the business you're going to be working with. Do a research of the employ of your employer before going there. I and mean, you save a lot of time. Yeah. You save a lot. You don't have to experience everything firsthand, you know? Exactly. You know you know about my uh, production company. I've showed you a mm -hmm. couple of works. It just started like uh, not long before COVID. It, it started, it started I wish you best of luck. I, I like it. It's, Thank you You guys much. are doing a great job. Thank you very much. So like it did start there. Um, but ahead of time, I was working for what, eight years with different teams uh, i was part of different teams different uh, uh production companies i went in so like i kind of learned the ins and outs of this uh this subject or this industry mm -hmm. right so even yeah. before getting into like putting myself on the line no i did like a bit of like research i mm -hmm. had an experience with a couple couple of teams for about eight years basically um some of them being here in canada some of them being in lebanon um but like it kind of makes it helps you build the overall idea and then helps you build your picture or your vision that you were exactly. aiming for exactly uh, here's the thing uh it's, it's all about time it is time is a capital uh that people do not that people are not aware of mm -hmm. time is a capital uh save some time like because i personally i did not use to, like um Everything that I wanted to do, I, I, I would just do it at the moment. When mm -hmm. I think of it, I would do it. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was the person like that. This, this that was happened me, like, a lot. Before. Yeah, this was me before. Uh, and when you're that type of person, you're going to be losing a lot of time in experiencing things that other people have already experienced. Other yeah. people have already All tried and wasted time on. Definitely. So yeah. why not taking this the, their experiences? Because the thing is, in our age, in, in this wave of... Uh, uh, do whatever you want and and and, and you're going to be the one and you, and believe in yourself and they have self confidence just do whatever you want and 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 this in these times people think people do not do not appreciate other people's experiences no they don't unfortunately and this is so one of the, like trust me this is one of the things that are and that's why that's why like when i learn about people who start their own companies uh touching upon the touching upon time um when I learn from people who started their own companies, they would say this main thing. Okay, people don't appreciate time. They don't. They don't know how much, uh, how much time is worth. So mm -hmm. you should. That's why you should never sell your time exactly. for a rate. Like never ever do that. Like yeah, yeah. That's unfortunately that's what you have to do for some time. Of course, mm -hmm. like when you're a high school student, when you're even in uni, like you just your main goal is to study and make some money to cover your expenses. Exactly, that's fine. But then after, like I see a lot of people who get stuck into this loop of I'm selling my time, I'm getting an hourly rate, and then that's how much I work for. Mm -hmm. Is there's like time is expensive, 
and there's nothing nothing that can um, pay for it. Exactly. And unfortunately, a lot of people fall in this this trap after they graduate, after they uh, they want to work, and mm -hmm. then they're just selling their time. Yeah. Uh, like, can you expand more on what do you mean by selling their time? Selling your time, just like for an example, okay, like working as a part time job. Mm -hmm. for oh an yeah. Example. Okay. Okay. You're selling your time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are, unfortunately. like. Um, Especially if what you're working on does not teach you nothing. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. But, like, here's the thing. But then if you if you want to not sell your time, you're selling a product, for an example. Um, there is sometimes where you have control over the t your time and you're just resting. You're using this time for your own. And there's, there, there's sometimes where you're, like, you're working 1 a.m., after midnight just That's like right. just like working there um till till morning basically mm -hmm. uh trying to submit a project or submit That's right. or give a product and there is like that's a big difference, right? Because you're willing to give something in this way. You're not selling your time, but but, but here's the thing: you're selling something, right? Yeah, but here's the thing: it's 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 completely like it's completely different between a person and another person because not a lot it of is. people, yeah, not a lot of people are actually able to build a business. Not a lot of people are actually no. able to sell th some things. The easiest thing to sell is time, and here's why a lot of people went, uh, work for. Um, garbage part-time jobs like uh just uh getting the minimum wage for doing nothing maybe just uh and and you're a student and you're studying something you might you must be uh, looking for a job that that you can relate to oh definitely i just said and if you yeah. yeah exactly and if you can't find the job the part like the part-time job that you'll depend your financials on mm -hmm. at least work in something that's going to teach you something of course yeah uh one of the things that i actually like one of the things because i worked in like a lot of part-time jobs <laughs> personally uh in the past three to four years uh i when i when i when i when i when i started my part-time career you know i i worked in a in a coffee shop mm. um for a long time the the thing the only thing that it taught me though is how to be consistent in a job right this is one of the things that I learned from a job that does not seem to be uh to teach me a lot no but but this is why I said it depends on the person if you're able to learn to learn something from a, from a job, just do it. But being for like four to five years in a part-time job, that's not teaching you nothing. You're just doing your routine, just making, uh, and the price is different. Like if, uh, if if you're gonna if you're gonna be getting the minimum wage over one hour, that means yeah, you're selling your time for a for a cheap price. Yeah. But 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 like if if I mean if if you're making uh, above twenty dollars an hour, then why not working at a part-time oh, part job and expanding that. your network? You know. Basically, yeah. yeah. So yeah, one of the one some of the, jobs pay exactly. good, pay well, and and and, and you you get to you get to, to expand your network because this yeah, is exactly. this is one of the important things in especially in Canada. Oh, network like, is the main thing. Exactly, like uh, when you want to start your business, if you, if you don't have a good network, you'll never be able to do nothing. No, that's never. why part-time jobs help. Uh, in our case, if these part part-time jobs are worth it. Yeah, so what I'm trying to say is, sorry, what I said, what, what I was trying to say is like, there are some cases where you have to work in uh, mm -hmm. in a part-time job, but unfortunately, some people get stuck there in that loop. And oh, then, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then and then it goes over and over again. And yeah, again yeah, I mean, and again, I, mean, and I, I, mean I, I met somebody before. Uh, yeah. His name was Matt. Um, uh, I just met him in a, at a cashier. Uh, and we, we, we had a quick chat. I was like, how old are you? He's like, I'm uh, 34, year, uh, 34 years Ooh. old. Um, and I asked him, "How long like, have you been? Working? How long have you been working here as a cashier?" And he was like, "I'm here for like 16 years." Oh my god! I mean, like 16 years. And and I asked him, like, "Did you make savings?" And he was like, "No, like I work for two weeks. I make a thousand dollar, or like twelve hundred dollars, and then I spend them uh, on like my weekends and stuff like that, and I on my on, like the daily purchases. Like 16 years working Ouch. as a cashier, not not saving one." single penny ouch yeah. that was that was really like shocking for me because that was like when i first came to canada and because the way that we were thinking is like as well i can relate to it when you come in here you find a lot of job opportunities and you're like yeah i'm, I'm gonna do well exactly I'm gonna because it's it, working like, yeah i mean after two years mm -hmm. after two years of me working in like that coffee shop i was able to find a bigger a better job and then a better job and then better because it's it's it, 
uh, it's it's like you climbing climbing yeah. a stair. You know, exactly. like you don't have to be sitting. For, but the thing is, I asked him this question. That's how how the chat ended. I asked I asked him why, mm-hmm. and he was like, "Why bother working with a different team? Why bother getting into a new environment?" And this is the problem. It's just a mentality that's not not up not up to to challenge to new challenges and new because it's it's yeah. it requires you like you know to get into the uh, atmosphere of the work to get to know other people with you and uh, a little bit of uh, training and that's it but this challenge is not accepted by everybody yeah actually i i told that i i said it to someone before okay so i told him i was like you know what really i'm thankful to those kind of, those kind of people because they do create opportunities for s- such a person as me and as you uh, where we like if we see an opportunity we just take it we don't ask questions mm-hmm. we're like okay yeah that's a, that's something that i'm taking right now you open a door for me i'm going in <laughs> like that's right i'm not i'm really not gonna stay on the other side yeah i really want to find out what's at the other end of the door and that, that's it exactly it's like it's 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 the same as um it's the same as fishing you know fishing for jobs like uh uh you won't be you won't be sitting in the same spot if you know if you know there are no fishes here no uh and all all of the other people like you're tell you're talented fisher fisherman you know uh, fishing man and people are telling you go to the other side and you'll you'll be you'll find a lot of fishes and you can fish there mm-hmm. but they just uh prefer to sit in, the, in their spot because sometimes they don't, they don't want to take sense. away sometimes it doesn't make sense for them though well it must of make uh made any sense like for 16 years old for 16 <laughs> years of working at the same spot as a cashier i am pretty sure that he like he found a lot of uh better jobs but he just decided to stay in there exactly yes. and like imagine like it's 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 the same pay for like 16 years like it's it, it oh it did not like, change at all like it, it did not change it's just because the minimum wage was like, was like yeah it was like 11 and now it's 13 14 that's it like it's not it's not so it's uh, always minimum wage but like it's yeah. always minimum wage and what, what can you what can you do with the minimum wage in this country no you inflation know? inflation destroys everything basically so yeah. Yeah. you can do <laughs> nothing with the minimum plan. wage nothing um i just want to touch upon the last thing before we end the episode so since you have an arabic background you've mm-hmm. done poetry in arabic how do you mix it sometimes with your uh, or how does it have an effect on your overall um music production because i know i've seen i've seen some of your work love mm-hmm. them all <laughs> thank you big fan thanks <laughs> thank you so yeah um how does it does it does somewhat have an effect but you make it in a way that like it's very beautifully mixed that like it, this is still like it, it does not affect the like the other culture mm-hmm. you're just mixing you're just mixing a bit of what you have yeah so uh, here's the thing that the, the point is music is a, is a worldwide language exactly uh it's the same as English, yeah. Like everybody's everybody, not everybody, but like most people understands understand English, mm-hmm. English. But music, it's not everybody. It's everyone on this planet. They mm-hmm. can they can feel your music. Oh, no matter what 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 taste uh, uh, their taste is. Very true. Uh, music is a worldwide uh, is a national uh, uh, language that you can. Feel. That's why um, a, if you're a pianist mm-hmm. and you compose a beautiful piece. Everybody around the globe will listen to it. Uh, it's just, uh, it's it's a language that everybody understands. It's a language because it's it's transferring emotions. Like, what do you use your language for? It's you telling me your emotions, and I, uh, uh, you expressing your emotions, and I, I'm me receiving your emotions. Of course, it's a transfer cycle. Same thing happens with with music. That's why it's uh, if 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 you if you as an as an artist have this this idea that just. Uh, appreciate your own art your own music mm-hmm. and other people will listen to it definitely other people will love it but uh, but uh, like and indeed um and the language like the lyrics lang- the lyrics language is still arabic because my network is there i am aiming to expand uh, my network here mm-hmm. and to start producing in english um okay. as as a language but like uh music uh, is beautiful no matter uh what what frame you put it you put it in you yeah know? No matter, yeah. No matter what you, um, what the kind of music you're creating, some mm-hmm. everyone will have different feelings about it. Exactly, because it is it is a language, and it and it hits everyone differently. That's right. That's that's absolutely right. Love it. Uh, well, thank you very much for being thank here you. on the thank Talk you. Club podcast, thank and 
Uh, yeah, thank you for sharing your uh, your ideas. Thank you thank for giving you. me the opportunity thank of you. being with you. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Um, everyone, if you stayed till the end of the episode, thank you very much for staying. And if you haven't watched our previous episodes, go watch them. You know, leave a like, leave a comment. Uh, go to our social media in the description. You know, visit them follow subscribe to our youtube channel and stay tuned for our next episode have a good day